What's up, gamers? How does one do a YouTube intro? Anyways, what's up, guys? Welcome to the YouTube channel. We do this now. Let's talk enclosures. So today we're going to be setting up Rafiki's new enclosure. For those of you who don't know, he's not with me right now because he just ate today, but Rafiki is my six-foot common boa. He's a boa constrictor imperator, and uh, we just got him a brand new, honestly, a mansion. We got him a six-foot by three-foot by three-foot enclosure, a PVC enclosure from Dragon House. I've been super excited to get this thing set up. And before we get too far into it, let's talk about the sponsor for today's video. So Dragon House was kind enough to sponsor today's video. I've known the owner for over a year now and I've been using his terrariums for quite some time and I highly recommend his supplies. The quality of their enclosures is second to none at some of the most competitive pricing that I've seen since shopping around for reptile supplies. Also starting on Black Friday, they're going to be doing a store-wide discount of 20% and then they're going to be increasing that just on Cyber Monday to a 25% store-wide discount. And actually the enclosure that we're going to be setting up today, I purchased myself from Dragon House. So if you like what you see and you want to support me and the content that I make, be sure to check them out through the link in the description below. All right, now that we're done with that, let's talk logistics of the cage. So the terrarium is a PVC build. It's six feet long, three feet deep and a hole, three feet tall. It's an absolute behemoth of a terrarium. Uh, it's a front loading terrarium. It's got two sliding plexiglass doors. And uh, what we got in there for heat source? So for heat, we got a uh, ceramic heat panel that's drilled into the ceiling of the thing. And then we got a, uh, what is this thing? What is this called? I don't know what it's called, but it's, it's and we got a, is it a thermometer? It's like a fancy thermometer. Anyways, we got a thermometer. What is it called? It's, it's a thermostat. Oh, it's a thermostat. I'm an idiot. It's a thermostat. How do you say it? What did he say? We've got a vivarium electronics thermostat hooked up to it that has a, uh, the heat panel plugs into that. Then it sends a probe down into the terrarium that monitors the ground temperature and it plugs into the wall. So if the terrarium gets too cold, the thermostat tells the heat panel to turn on. If the terrarium gets too hot, the thermostat tells the heat panel to turn off or turn down. Now let's get into uh, me climbing inside of this thing and putting it all together and making it look nice. All right, so starting off with putting this terrarium together, of course, we're gonna throw in the substrate first. We decided to go with a cypress mulch for the substrate. I think we end up using about three eight quart bags to cover the inside of this terrarium. This terrarium is six foot by three foot by three foot. So we've got a lot of ground to cover here. So we just cut out one side of the bag, flip it over and roll up the sleeves and start spreading everything around. You wanna make sure that you have a pretty thick layer of substrate so that there's enough of it to soak up a good amount of humidity, but not leak through to the bottom of the terrarium. On top of that, um, Rafiki, although he's a boa and shouldn't be trying to burrow, uh, has decided that burrowing is something that he enjoys sometimes. So we want to make sure that there's enough substrate in there for him to do that if he so chooses. We're back in there just spreading everything out, shaking it off. And we throw in another bag. Same thing, just grabbing the razor blade, cutting the whole side of the bag out and flipping it over. And here we're going to see that the boy has gotten an upgrade from his shoe boxes. We got two of these hides. They're super nice. They're super big, super tall. They'll last Rafiki for basically ever. Here it is. So we're going to throw it on in there and start pressing it down. Get it nice and submerged. Make sure it's in there snug. So let me wiggle it back and forth to try and shove it down into the cypress. Now we're tucking in the back edges just in case if Rafiki pushes too hard on one side, he doesn't end up moving it or wearing it like a hat as he is wont to do. We'll be very sad to not have him able to wear his shoe boxes as hats anymore, but it'll be much more secure for him. So now we're going to go ahead and grab the water dish that we got for Rafiki. It's a couple inches deep, fits into the corner nicely. It's got a good heavy bottom to make sure that he doesn't flip it on over. And now that we've brought that in, we're going to do the same thing here again. We're going to scoop some of it out or scoop some of the substrate out and then put it back in and around it to make sure it's kind of locked in place there. We don't want him flipping it over or spilling any water or anything like that covering up the edges and kind of blending it into the terrarium a little bit look at making it look like it's set in there it's been there for a while i think we come back now with the cold side hide and you're going to want to if you're putting any snake terrarium together you're going to want to hide at least two hides for the terrarium one on the hot side one on the cold side and this is because the ways that snakes uh, regulate their body heat is by swapping between sides if they're too cold they'll go on over to the hot side sit there for a little bit get nice and warm and when they get too hot they'll head on over to the cold side to cool off and this is the eternal cycle of the snake get too hot, 
go be cold get too cold go be hot and we're gonna move back over to the hot side of the hide and this is something that i personally like to do i prefer a more natural look so you're gonna see me start just tossing cypress on top of the hot side hide here try in a valiant effort to blend it in a little bit better with the rest of the enclosure make it look a little bit more natural instead of just like a box um i get it to where i'm i'm okay with it and i decide eh, leave it be so we got two we got the first thing which is a vine that i went out and cut down from my own backyard like an absolute caveman with a saw because rafiki needed it and then the next thing is a grapevine that we bought from the Serpentarium as well. Um, it's some dried out grapevine. It's super nice. The wood's actually pretty smooth, so I'm not like worried about him like hurting himself on it or anything. And it's pretty lightweight, so it's easy for me to move around. So here you're going to see us shoving it into the corner because I quickly realized that it's way too small to do anything horizontal. We're going to cover the base and the substrate here to try and give it some sort of structure. Granted, uh, cypress bark, not that strong. So... Now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and toss the vine into the opposite corner, kind of leaning over the entrance to the cold side hide, just kind of mirroring the grape vine on the hot side there. So now this is actually, this is an old hide that Rafiki used to be in. Um, as I started putting more things into the terrarium, I again began to quickly realize that I had a lot more space than I thought I did. And it was feeling really empty and open. So I'm just kind of grabbing old things that I've used for his enclosures in the past and just kind of yeeting them in there. Um, here, this is an old log hide of Rafiki's that he's way too big now, but I'm going to end up uh, burying it in the cypress and putting it at the base of that vine that's supposed to serve as the climbing option to kind of anchor it into the corner. So that way, if Rafiki does climb on it, he doesn't fall. We're going to look at this thing and I'm going to look at it and I'm going to go, I have no idea where the fuck to put this. And we're going to put it in the corner and then we will never touch it again. Now here comes this way too small vine that's just for like ground cover purposes. I'm gonna do some weird shit with it here. I put it there, I decide I don't like it. I look over at the grapevine and I'm like, oh, maybe I can like lean it onto that and do something fancy here. Uh, we're quickly going to throw that idea out the window as there's no way to make it stable. And we kind of just decide to kind of lean it up against the wall and make it more of a decor piece than anything functional. But uh, what decor like that vine will actually do for you is when snakes go into shed a lot of times they'll go around their cage kind of like trying to rub the the skin off so providing them with things to like rub their body against will help them with sheds a lot uh, okay so we're gonna start laying some of the ground cover here these are all fake plants uh, this is one of Rafiki's old plants and I'm just trying to find a spot so this is just to give him some cover if he decides to move around he won't feel super exposed if he decides to do some exploring next up is Rafiki's security plant uh, we end up putting that on like right in front of the entrance to the cold side hide so that he give a little bit more security, a little bit more cover. And it ends up covering the entrance a little bit. Ah, uh, yeah. So we come back with Rafiki's purple flower because we actually didn't know Rafiki's gender for the longest time. He didn't get probed until he was, I think, five. And then some more ground cover to kind of cover up the entrance and make the entrance to the hot side hide a little bit more secure. And if you look just in front of the water dish, there's that huge open space. And I am quickly realizing that I uh, need more things. Crazy. Yep, that's a uh, that's a house plant, a, a, like a fake decorative house plant that I just kind of like took out of its pot and was like, you know who needs this? My snake. We're going to just go ahead and throw it in there. <laughs> and it really fills the space really well is why I love it so much. Um, it provides a lot of cover because I don't you don't want Rafiki or whatever snake you're working with to feel super exposed in the terrarium so you're going to want to provide like options to break up the open space after climbing in there and putting the thing together and introducing rafiki into the terrarium i am super happy with how this enclosure turned out i've never been able to uh i've never had so much creative freedom with what i put into my enclosures just because of how big the thing is um i'm really happy with how it looks i'm a little disappointed that i wasn't able to get like a real solid climbing option into the thing but all in all, there is a perfect amount of ground cover. The two water dishes are gonna handle humidity fine with the addition of some misting and the cypress, I have no doubt is gonna hold on to humidity just great. Um, the new hides are a major upgrade. Rafiki was in shoe boxes beforehand, um, which were a temporary fix. Raf Rafiki and I have moved a lot. Um, the addition of the, uh, the potted house plant is my personal favorite. It's just mwah, chef kiss. When it comes to temperature, I was a little bit worried that with how big the terrarium was, the one ceramic heat panel wasn't going to be able to keep up super well, but it was only under temp for, for a little bit. 
After it took about like 12 hours for it to go from 7 degrees to about 86, which is what I have the ground temp sent to right now. Um, and it's been sitting there and Rafiki's been in there for about a day now. He loves it. He's been switching back and forth between hot and cold sides. He, I haven't seen if he's done any crazy amount of exploring, but the terrarium's gorgeous. I'm really happy with what I put together in there. And uh, I'm super stoked about the new cage. I think Rafiki is too. Anyways, guys, as per usual, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like. If you have anything that you want to see out of the channel, be sure to leave a comment down below. And uh, if you want to see more of this, go ahead and subscribe. And hit the bell! No, don't. if you don't want to hit the bell, you don't gotta. But hit the bell. I think that's going to do it for us today. So, per usual, have fun, be safe, don't die. Peace and blessings, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!